Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today, well, I'm using Grandma's Tree. You can kind of discount the rest of this. Not that they're not wonderful sets, they are. I just really didn't use them. Uh, I ended up using other things that I didn't show you because I didn't know how my card was going to end up. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, and then, you know, we'll go back to, to story time. You know how we do. Um, with Grandma's Tree, it is or can be a three-step process, um, which is there's a 3D embossing folder, there's dies, and there's stencils. If you are using the 3D embossing folder with your dies, you want to do your die cutting first um, because it's just easier to get everything to line up. So here, what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the two different layers of the tree again this is not necessary. This is just an option if, in case you want to use the included, you know, lights, birds. Um, I can't remember what the other one is. I'm sorry. But so I went ahead and die cut them out. And then I put all my little lights and star in the little bowl up there. And then I'm just going to fit this into um, the depressed portion of the embossing folder until it is flush. So everything will be completely flat. And then I'm going to tape it in place and I'm going to do the same thing with my star. This is going to hold it in place while I run it through my um, embossing, well, die cutting embossing machine. And so that it stays where it needs to and it gets the appropriate amount of pressure. Speaking of pressure, here I have the um, universal plate system for Spellbinder. So it tells you what the sandwich is. Um, you may have to see what the sandwich is for your own machine, but for this, um, embossing folder, like this is how you would normally put it through, right? Is you would put it in, um, where it was laying, um, uh, horizontal. You actually want to put this one in where it's facing vertical. So that way, and I apologize for the view. I put my handle on the, uh, on the wrong side. Um, it, that way the pressure is continuous across the entirety of the plate. If you tr try to do it the normal way where everything is vertical and it's applying the pressure from the top of the image down to the bottom, um, the pressure itself can, dependent upon your machine, can cause the image to shift even if it's taped in and not get the correct embossing where it needs to go. Um, so those are just some notes about that. You can use the stencils. You don't have to use the stencils. You can only use the stencils. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of options here. I, because I'm a little bit too much, I can admit that, um, I used a lot of things in my arsenal, but you can pick and choose what works for the look that you're going for. And just to be clear, if you are a person who's just looking for the, I want to make it sparkly, shiny, I don't want to pay attention to all of this. That's fine. Jump to like the 20 minute mark. You're not going to hurt my feelings. So with that being said, I am going to do some ink blending. Uh, is this step necessary? No, it is not. You do not have to do this. Um, and if you don't have the stencils, you can still do this technique. Um, it's just going to be, you're just going to have to change your application a little bit. But I like having a base layer of color underneath my Copic coloring. I knew that I was going to go in and add more shading with my Copics. You can do all Copics. You can do all stenciling, like whatever mediums you have. The only thing I will tell you is I still have yet to find a way that I like colored pencil on 3D embossed images. Um... And so that for me is a challenge, but if you found a way to make that work for you, you could even use that. So the first stencil does the top two layers. The second stencil does the middle and bottom layer. And I'm using the same distressing colors for both of these. I'm just trying to get a base. If I was only using the stencils, I would be adding more shading than this. But I know that I'm going to go in there and do that with my alcohol markers. Um, so for me, it isn't necessary. But if you are only using the stencils and you're not adding any additional shading, you might want to throw in another color here. Uh, I would probably use... For this yellow-green combination, I'd probably use Rustic Wilderness, but you can use whatever you would like. So then the bottom, 
I did with fossilized amber and then I'm adding a little bit of shading with vintage photo. Um, again, this is not necessary. I just like having a base layer. That's me personally. It is completely like it would look totally fine without that. Um, plus using the stencils is just easier. Like, let's just be honest. It's just easier to add shading this way. That's why they're so popular. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. So on the third stencil, it does have the base of the star, but I knew that I was going to tuck mine behind and you wouldn't even see it. So I didn't even bother doing that. Here at the, this one is the third stencil and it leaves open the area of the trees, but I wanted mine to be white and the technique that I wanted to use, I had to do a whole lot of other things before I got to it. However, I did want to add the shading to the base, uh, like the tree stand. And so I did some masking, but I didn't do enough masking. And you're going to see here in a minute that I got yellow on the white part of my snow. And we know yellow and snow, no go. It's all bad. So because it is Distress Ink, it's water soluble. I am going to go in, even though this is regular cardstock, this is Nina 80 pound cardstock. Um, I'm just going to go in with a small paintbrush and a little bit of water and I'm going to blot up as much as I can. Uh, once it dries, it really was not very noticeable. But again, I know with my process going through this, um, that I'm going to be doing lots of other things. And ultimately at the end of the day, I'm not going to be able to see it. If you aren't doing all of the things that I'm doing, which is totally okay, and you can still see yours, put your sentiment over it, put an embellishment on it. Like that's how we all get through card making y'all. Like there's a way to cover it up. It'll be fine. Just keep rolling. So now we've moved on to the shading, um, adding the shading and all I'm really doing this, like for this part right here, this is my lightest color and I am just going over. I'm not just solidly coloring it. I am just following the pattern that is embossed on there which is like these like this pine needle pattern and so I'm just doing little flicks of color in the direct like general direction that they are embossed in there so it doesn't look like my marker strokes are going the opposite direction of my embossing I want everything to look nice together um and so this really didn't take very long at all and then I'm gonna stop and apparently lose my voice. Um, but then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to move on to the, um, the in-between step before I start adding a lot more shading. And you'll see that here in just a second. So while we're watching me color, finish coloring this, um, several of you uh, have been like, where have you been? And I have been gone for a week. <laughs> um, the strep, the strep got me. That's pretty much what happened. My husband had it the weekend, the week before last, he got diagnosed on Saturday with strep. And then on Monday, um, which is actually when I finished up this card, which is the last one that I have made, um, like Monday afternoon, I was like, Ooh, I'm tired. And I had picked up a shift at work and I was like, well, I'm going to need to take a nap anyway. So I will just, you know, I'll just lay down and take a nap. And then four hours later, I got out of bed and then I got on the couch and then I stayed there too. Um, so let's go back to what I'm doing here. So I want my grandma tree lights to have light around them. And so what I originally was going in to do was with my colorless blender, I was going in to remove color around the area. Here was the problem that was happening. I couldn't find my regular sketch colorless blender. That's why I was using the one that's a chow. Um, and it just wasn't, it didn't have enough in it. So here's something else that you can do if you're, you don't have a refill for your colorless blender or you can't find your marker, which in my case was literally staring me right in the face and I just did not see it. Um, you can use a lighter color. So these are all like zero zeros. You can use a lighter color to move pigment. Um, if you're like going over another color and you want that area to be lighter, you don't have to use the colorless blender to do it. You can use a lighter color of itself. So I could have used a lighter green to move the pigment, but in this case I am using just a lighter color of whatever I like bulb I want to be there. And because Copics are transparent, 
typically this is true of all alcohol markers, but I know that it is true of Copics. Um, because they're more, they are transparent, a lighter color will remove darker color um, in, in your coloring. So you have to be conscientious of where you put your lighter colors because it's more um, pure, but it also has more um, of the colorless blender in it. And so that is why this still works to lighten up those areas. And then I am going to go in and use those other three colors that I showed you to add my shading. But that way I have a marker for my glow of my lights and I'm not going to add my darker shading over my glow. And it's going to start to look a little wild um, because we're a avoiding, you know, these big circles in the middle of the tree, but I promise it will make sense in the end. So anywho, so I was like, did not get out of bed on Monday um, until I think Eric came home from work. And then I just sat on the couch and that was, that was it. Uh, and then I still had to go to work because like, I don't, I work at the dispatch center of maybe like two, three times a month. So the days I pick up are few and far between. So I was like, well, I still got to go. So we had some over the counter medicine and we only had two doses left. So like I waited until 630 at night to take my dose. And then that way I could take the second one while I was at work. Cause thank God I was only working for four hours. So I was like, I just need to go in find a corner where nobody is like, so I'm not spreading my germs or whatever. And, you know, they're really good about having Lysol wipes and stuff for us to wipe our desk down. So that's pretty much what I did. Made it through my shift on Monday, came home. Um, and then I was just rocked. So Tuesday morning, I got up, I took Peanut to school. Um, and then I called my doctor's office. There's a whole nother story about how I tried to do an online one, which was a mess, but I'll skip that for the moment. Um, and so I called and I was like, hey, this is my situation. Like, I'm pretty sure I have strep uh, based on my husband's diagnosis and all the white spots in the back of my throat. And uh, do you have any appointments? Because Christmas is coming and I don't want to ruin it. And they were like, we just had a cancellation at, you know, for 1020. Can you make it by then? And I was like, sure can. Yes, ma'am. I will be there. So I went and, you know, they did, you know, the regular exam. And then um, she was like, well, we're going to test you for the flu and we'll test you for strep just to see, um, you know, just to make sure that, you know, we're covering all our bases. And I was like, okay. So she said, it usually takes about 10 minutes. I'll come in and let you know what the results are. Sounds good. Like two minutes later, she's back in the door and she's like, so your strep test lit up like a Christmas tree. So we're just going to go ahead and prescribe you antibiotics because even if you were positive for both, like for the flu, there's nothing that they can do because it's viral and they don't give you antibiotics for viruses. Let's go back to the card. So at this point, all of my shading is in for the tree. I'm really liking the way that that is looking. And then I'm going to move on to the base. I'm a gold person. Um, you don't have to be, you can color the silver, you can, you can color your base, whatever you would like it to be, but I'm a yellow gold person. And so that is why I chose to color it this way. Originally I showed you only three colors, but I am going to bring in a light yellow just to go over everything and get it to blend, um, a little better. And that's going to match the distressing colors that I chose pretty nicely. Um, was there something else I was going to say about this? Uh, so just a break from my, well, that pretty much is my sick story. I was sick all week. Um, but so I actually had one of these, like the, it is so aptly named grandma's tree because they're just, they're not common now. Um, I think they are becoming more so, you know, as we're getting older and missing those kind of things from our, our childhood. Uh, I saw a, like painting party or something somebody had on Facebook where they actually painted these trees, um, which I think is super cool. So old school ceramic tree with the, um, you know, they either had like the colored lights in them or white lights in them, or um, some had candles, some had like little birds. I think my friend Lisa said hers were like little cardinals. I chose to do the one with lights because my grandmas had lights in them. Now, 
my, we talked a lot about Graham, you know, because I spent my whole childhood with her. Like, you know, she was around obviously until I was well into my thirties. Thank God. I'm extraordinarily grateful for that. But we don't really ever talk about my dad's mom. I am one of three siblings and my sisters are older than me. I'm the baby of the family. So the tree, we have to go back to the card real quick. So here, I'm just coloring my little light bulbs. You can't really see the stems of these, but if you wanted to have yours a little bit more set up, because some of those trees are that way where you can see like the posts. Uh, I just colored mine with a um, gold gel pen. And that seemed to work for me to match my base. I also use that same pen to add some detail to my star, which later on when we do the technique to make everything kind of sparkly, shiny, all that fun stuff, um, you can still see those gold details through the technique. And I just wanted to note that. Uh, so anyway, the tree that I... I that we have that was of this was actually not Graham's. It was my grandma T. Um, and that is my dad's mom. Now, because I am the youngest sibling, uh, and my parents are, they're obviously older now cause I'm older now, but my parents are 10 years apart. So she, Oh, now we go back to the card. I'm never going to get to tell you the story. Um, so here, this isn't necessary, but because I have longer nails, it made it easier for me to slide the lights in. I just used the little honeybee pokey tool. I didn't widen the hole at all. I just pushed the bottom part down so that it, I could, like the slit that you slide them into was just a little bit more open because I was having a hard time holding on to them. Maybe it would have been better if I used my tweezers. I'm not really sure. But because I have little like longer nails, it was hard for me to get them in there. So I was just trying to make my life easier. You're also going to see here in a second that I'm going to add um, a little bit more of a glow, not with the same colors I used to color the bulbs, but with just a slightly um, darker color not like a full-on I didn't go crazy um but just like a, a middle of the road so for a red I used an R32 for the orange I used a Y38 um for the blue I think I used a B00 um like just so that I could create this glow that wasn't going to be as bold as the actual light but it wasn't going to be as light as the colors I pushed the green out with okay now, I think I have covered enough that we can go on. So anyway, because my parents are 10 years apart, my grandmother passed away young, but I was only four. And so because of that, I have no memories of her. Um, I have, the only memory I have of her is actually her funeral. That's it. That's all I've got. And, oh, I'm such a sap. I get, I get so emotional. But like my sister Michelle, who is 13 years older than I am, has all of these memories of her because she got to spend so much time with her. And so while I am not a person who is big on material things, I'm not. Um, but of that, it's all I have. So when this set came out, I was like, this looks just like this tree and so I was super excited to use it. And so I wanted to sneak it in this holiday season um, just because for me, it's sentimental. And it might not be that way for everybody and that's okay. But for me, it is. Let's go back to the card. So here, this is the third stencil again. And I am using our brilliant white ink. This is pigment ink. And you can emboss with pigment ink. You have to work fast for this part. I'm just going to be honest because when you're um, stenciling on the pigment ink, it doesn't stay wet as long as if you stamp it. So first things first, I'm going in with a little spoon and I am using puff white embossing powder because my grandmother's tree had white puffy like snow edges, but it also had glitter on it. Like the glitter was, the snow was glittery and puffy. Like that's just how they painted it. And so I wanted to recreate that look. So I went in, did the pigment ink, so it would have something to stick to. If you don't have pigment ink, you could use a clear embossing ink. 
here I missed an area, like it just dried down too fast. And so like thankfully that honeybee, the smallest one from their detail set is so small. Like I could go in, I could just hit that area and then I could have my puffed up snow. So that is this portion of it. And then you could leave it this way and it would be super cute with its little puffed up snow edges. And I do think that it does mimic, you know, real life. Um, how it looked, you know, especially when I was a, you know, a kid and everything is magic at Christmas when you're a kid. Um, but I wanted, because it was a ceramic, it had this shiny glaze over it and everything was, you know, shiny and it was glittery. So what you see me doing here is this is the sparkle embossing powder from Hero Arts. I can't speak for other sparkle embossing powders, but I can speak for this one. It is a clear embossing with just glitter. Now, you could coat everything in a um, embossing medium, like clear embossing ink. I did not want to do that because if you get too thick of a coat, it takes the puff out of your white. So because they melt together and then there's no puffy whiteness. So I am literally just heating the paper. There's no other medium for this to stick to. Heating the paper, dumping on the, the clear... Um, you know, the sparkle embossing powder. And then it is giving me this like glazed look that ceramics have that's like, it's so sparkly and shiny. Now this isn't completely smooth. This is not perfection, um, but it is enough to give me the effect that I want for how that tree looks in my mind. And um, I put it all the way over the stand. I went back and did the star a couple of times to make sure that was like good and solid and shiny. Um, and you, this doesn't just apply to Christmas trees. You could use this for any die cut and it intensifies the color that's underneath it. Whether you're using the Distress Inks or the Copic markers because it's adding that, you know, layer of shine. Uh, if you don't want the glitter, you could just use clear embossing powder and you could get that same you know, shine without the sparkly glitter portion, but it's a super cool technique. Now, you see this background. This is the background I had originally made, and um, I didn't like it for this card. I liked the technique, and I will use it again in the future, and that's why I didn't even bother to show it here, because I'll show it to you another time. But ultimately, I decided that it needed something else. The tree wasn't standing out, and the tree is my focal point. So I did a blue distress background, and then it was unbalanced. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll get to that when we're there. But anywho, so I, the material things from my dad's mom are all the things that I have for me. My sisters have memories. Uh, I don't, I was just, I was too young. And so having something like this, like that is sentimental, that is nostalgic, um, I think is wonderful. Like, it brings me happiness, even though I get emotional, <laughs> um, to be able to look at those things and think of her. Even though I don't have those memories, like I have photos and I have her things, you know, on my mantle downstairs. I have her candle holders that, you know, she had that she chose to decorate her home with now decorate my home. And why am I so, oh, I don't know. I didn't, I guess I didn't realize it would, I guess I didn't realize that it would be this way. So sorry. Um, but I am grateful for those things and I am grateful for things like this, which is so you know, like card making is something that brings me joy and brings me happiness and makes my heart full. And I get to share it with you guys. And that's an extra layer of gratitude because it, it builds relationships and really people are the most important thing. And, but it's so nice to have things in this industry that, you know, I know, like, this is a card, okay? But I know that if I gave this card 
to one of my sisters or if I gave this card to my father that seeing that tree immediately they're going to think of her. I know that. And that's a wonderful, powerful thing. And that is, you know, one of the biggest joys of card making is being able to give somebody something to bring them a little bit of joy as well. So I am Anyway, I never thought I'd be that emotional over a 3D embossing folder, but here we are. <laughs> so anyway, my design felt a little bit unbalanced um, because the tree is so bottom heavy as a tree should be so that it can stand up and not fall over. Um, and so the top of my design needed a little bit of something. Insert the white pigment ink to save the day yet again. Uh, so here I used our, I think it's the, I think it's called Snowfall. I'm not 100% positive snowflakes it's the layering snowflakes in the dyes but i can't necessarily remember what the stencil is called i'll link it below um but i'm using this and i am applying much more ink at the top and letting it kind of fade off at the bottom um so that way the the card design when you look at it has balance um so yeah i'm pretty sure that's like the last the second to last thing that I did. So here I'm just checking to make sure that it looks right and I had to go down a little bit further. Um, but so if you are a person who, because I get several of these comments and I'm very grateful for them, you know, that you live alone or you have family that is far or maybe you don't have any family anymore or whatever, I hope that this video on Christmas Eve makes you feel like you're spending a little bit of time with a friend um, that's another one of the things that I'm extraordinarily grateful for that God has given me an opportunity to utilize my skill set to touch the hearts of other people. Um, and so if you, if you are one of those people, please know you are in my thoughts, you are in my prayers. I hope that I was able to spend a little bit of time with you in your holiday season and brighten up your day a little bit even though I <laughs> was very um unexpectedly emotional <laughs> during this video my mother probably cried through the whole thing just FYI um this sentiment is from the Saint Nick set it's actually the second time I've used it uh I did trim it down so I could run it through my um the bitty buzz cutter because it's just so much more convenient to have on my desk than the big one and honestly I had already put the big one away because I finished it like two days later because I couldn't figure out how to balance my design and sometimes that happens um so please know that during this holiday season I am extraordinarily grateful for you guys I am extraordinarily um grateful that you spend your time with me I know that your time is precious and that you can spend it watching anybody on YouTube and you chose to stop on my channel and I appreciate that. So we have a lot of more stories because the whole week has gone by and I haven't talked to any of you. We have so much to catch up on y'all. Um, but I do wish you a very Merry Christmas, a happy holiday season. I hope that you and yours are uh, well and um, yeah, so that's that. And then that's the whole card. So thank you guys for sticking it out with me. I, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you learned something and you were a little bit inspired and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.